Welcome to Stitchery Stories, where textile artists share their life in fabric and thread. Inspiration, techniques, disasters and delights. And I'm Susan Weeks, enthusiastic embroiderer and textile art dabbler who also loves podcasting. So take a break and enjoy our light-hearted chat and please share with your friends so they can enjoy it too. Hello and welcome to our lovely guest today, Heather Cart. Hello. Hello. Hi, Heather. Heather is the project secretary and publicity hound for the Stamford Bridge Tapestry Project. Now, Stamford Bridge is a few miles east of the city of York here in Yorkshire and was the site of a very important battle in 1066. Everyone has heard of the Battle of Hastings in 1066, but not so many have heard of the Battle of Stamford Bridge, which was a few days prior to that. I will actually leave Heather to tell us the story of the two battles and their place in British history. Now, the village itself has had a very active battle society for many years, and in 2016, that was actually the 950th anniversary. So in 2015, a Stamford Bridge resident and battle reenactor Tom Wiles came up with the brilliant idea of creating a Stamford Bridge tapestry inspired by the very famous Bayer tapestry, which documents the Battle of Hastings. Two years later, the project is going strong, building up momentum in terms of stitching, fundraising and publicity. Now, I do have to say, I have a very personal connection with this project. I actually moved to Stamford Bridge when I was five years old and lived there all of my childhood. Our family were very active members of the village and indeed my mum only left there eight years ago and moved to nearby Pocklington. I fondly remember taking part in at least one battle reenactment whilst I was at the primary school many moons ago. When I heard about this project as it was starting up, I wanted to be involved. But logistically, it has been difficult as I do live over an hour away. I'm self-employed single mum. And so getting away, escaping and joining in the stitching has not been very practical. However, I have kept up with the project newsletters and progress with a very keen interest. And it's wonderful today to be chatting with Heather. So hello again, Heather. Hello. Before we got into the main part of our chat, Heather shared the story of the 1066 Battle of Stamford Bridge with us. And I thought it would be nice to keep that as a separate audio download for you. So please check out the post for this episode on the Stitchery Stories website. And that's stitcherystories.com forward slash Stamford Bridge Tapestry Project. Moving on to the Tapestry Project, we've just quickly gone about Tom creating the idea of doing the project. So how did it it actually, because I know there was, as I say, there was the various workshops and and so on to kind of get the thing going. How did it actually take life? Were you involved from the start, Heather? Tom was interviewed by Mm. the local newspaper. At that time, I was waiting to move down here to join my mother and sister. And I was subscribed to their email feed. And this article came up that said, you know, we're going to do this enormous community embroidery about the Battle of Stamford Bridge. If you want to get in touch and and help do it, you'd be very welcome. And I wanted to do a community tapestry for a lot of community embroidery for a long time. Right. So I I wrote and said, I won't be in Stamford Bridge. I'll be in York. Is that all right? Um, To which he basically said, yeah, the more the merrier. (laughs) So especially for the first two me- first few meetings, there were people from all over East Yorkshire. And we, we had meetings once a month for the first six or seven months, six months. And at the Battle Reenactment Weekend in September 2015, uh, which the Heritage Society organises, that was when we officially launched it. Yes. We actually didn't start stitching on it for a little while after that. But that was when it was was officially launched. We lost a few people to start with, but then as it as it sort of took off, we've had more and more people. We have just over twenty regular stitchers working. Brilliant. On and you mentioned that you'd always wanted to get involved in a community thing. So have have you always had an, an existing interest in textile art and embroidery, Heather? Oh yes. I mean, my my mother taught me and my sister to uh, make her own clothes and embroider and knit and friend's mother taught me crochet we were always doing something yes like yes that. um I hadn't done a lot of embroidery I've done a fair, fair amount of cross stitch mm-hmm. um but I hadn't done a lot of actual embroidery until I got involved with with this project but we only used two stitches so yes you know, exactly so it, it's not a very steep learning curve <laughs> that way. and that's Bayer stitch and just out, an outlining stitch is that yeah yeah, yeah that's right 
we are we are doing it in what Tom used to call the spirit and the style of the bio tapestry. Yes. So we have an outline stitch in one colour, uh, outlining areas, and we fill it in with something called bio stitch, which is what they use for the bio tapestry. Mm, yes. And it's you you lay um, threads across, and then you lay other threads across those in a sort of so you have a sort of grid almost a, a flat ground, and then lines going across it and then you go around with tiny little stab stitches and you tack those lines going across down and that holds the whole thing in place it can't it's much more difficult for you to sort of catch threads and things mm. and it's very solid yes yes no it does give a lovely lovely effect but i've actually seen the bayer one because I, I lived in normandy for a number of years so i'm pleased to go and be able to see that as well how was the design created and kind of who's decided about the colours and the materials and, and, and the techniques that say the two stitches? Because the colours are, are very specific as well, aren't they? How, yeah. how did all that get going, Heather? Well, we were extremely lucky in that the co-chair of the Battle Society, uh, it's a gentleman called Chris Rock, is a graphic designer. Ah, right. And he, he and Tom worked out what story they would cover, what bits of it they would show. And then Chris set to and drew the whole thing out. And then he would he would pass the drawings on to us. They would come to us reversed because of the way that we, we got them onto the, the mm-hmm. fabric. We would use a light box to trace them onto calico, stretch that onto a frame. And then we are using a linen twill, which is, I mean, the word twill just means the, the way it's been woven. And we stretch that on top and then we, we can start working. We were extremely lucky in quite early stages uh, to have Shirley Smith join us yes. as project leader. I mean, she's a, a professional textile artist. Uh, she worked on the White Walker, if anybody has seen that, the Game of Thrones. The Game of Thrones. Yeah, she did jewel, necklace jewel, didn't she? If you go and see it, look for the jewel at the, the necklace because that was her, her piece that she did. Just fantastic. Mm, absolutely. Um, she was part of the Magna Carta embroidery. Yes. Uh, she's a York Minster broderer. She's extremely experienced and knows how know, knows the right sort of things to use. We're using, as I say, this linen twill. We're using Appleton's Cruel Wool. Because, I mean, it's an embroidery, it's not a tapestry. Yes. Uh, the same as the, the buyer tapestry isn't a property. Isn't a tapestry. <laughs> and she was the one who helped us with all of those choices. Right. And we got together to pick the colours. And we're using Appleton's because we can guarantee that it's going to be colour fast. And that if we need more of it, then there will be yeah, you um, can, yes, you can always the get same colour yeah. available. Yes, yes, we can always match them up. Prior to our doing our tapestry, the Battle of Fulford was commemorated in a bio tapestry type embroidery um they dyed their own we decided ah. much though we'd like to we had mm. no experience and that wasn't a good idea so we used appleton yeah that's sometimes you just have to take the sensible option and then uh, know yeah. that you're going to get that consistency over a period of time as well so yeah. we had a book of full-size reproductions of panels of the bio tapestry and we picked eight colors matching it to that so although they're modern colours that have been modern, used with modern dyes and are colour fast, they look quite muted. Yes, they it's it's a lovely fast. palette of colours. I've, I've, I've seen some colour pictures of the pieces that have been done and it is a, a, the beautiful, really beautiful yeah. colours. And how, how fortunate to have Shirley involved. I met Shirley in about 2000, I think, when I, start, when I joined the York Embroiderers Guild. So, and yeah. I'm, I'm trying to get Shirley on the show as a guest. She's so busy <laughs> trying to get her pinned down to a date proving the challenge. But, oh, it, yeah, so we can... She's always... She's She's always busy doing something. She's, She's an absolute star. Lovely. So yes, to how fortunate to have her absolutely. set it. So the thing's been set up properly. Yeah. How big will it all be when it's finished, Heather? Um, it will be, well, there will be 15 panels. 12 of those panels tell the story. Yeah. And they are just over a metre long, each ah. one. So it's going to be sizable. But there are going to be three panels, one at the beginning and two at the end, of about the same size. So in total, it will be something over 15 metres. That's some, it's some piece of work, isn't it, basically? Yes. <laughs> so, the, bio, the bio tapestry is 72 metres. So yes, know. yes. We're not, we're not quite at that size, but it it's, a, it's a substantial piece of work. It certainly is. And 
you know, we've mentioned that the Bayer Tapestry is the inspiration for this project, but yeah. I get the feeling that this project has also been inspiring for the current residents of Stamford Bridge. Um, oh, yes. In terms of kind of getting, because it's grown into you know quite a large village from what it was when I was there at age five. It's, it's, a, it's a big place now, basically. Stamford. Yeah, so, so, so bringing people together who maybe wouldn't have been brought together otherwise I think is really great what yeah. sort of new skills do you think have people learned because of this project just the stitchers um most of us didn't have a lot of experience in embroidery before we started right so people have been learning new things they've been oh that that was another part of your your question that I didn't answer the color so, yes people people choose their own colors when they're stitching it Right. So, you know, they've, they've grown in um, confidence with putting colours together and things like that. The first time you set needle in one of those pan- panels <laughs> is terrifying. Scary. I can't begin to tell you how yes. bright it is. So that's, that's really improved a lot of people's confidence. They've learned the stitches. They've been working on the panels. They've learned, you know, which colours to put together. Yes. Um, it's, helped, it's helped people through. We, we are such... A friendly, supportive group. It's a lovely atmosphere. We've helped people through bereavement. We've helped them through sickness. We've helped them through losing pets. Mm. Um, I know we've celebrated some lovely things as well. Yes. Um, as a result, at least two of us, there are other people considering it, but at least two of us have joined the Embroiderers Guild. Right, good. In fact, from, from October onward, um, I am one of the two people. I'm going to be the secretary. And Lillian, the other person, is going to be the treasurer. So we've not only joined the Embroiderers Guild, we've been roped in as well. Oh, so, you, so if, um, you've joined York Branch, have you? And they've roped yes. you onto the committee. Oh, well oh, done. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't take long, really. All you have to do is, you know, not be there. yourself look in, inconspicuous, I think. But, yes. So, and we've, we've also just, we're also just finishing our level two city and guilds fantastic which i would never have thought of of doing in a million years before i started this yes that's so that's that's it's, that's it's a lovely year. project to be part of yes and i think that's that's what and you were at the regional day as well weren't you the um Yes. York and Humberside region, region day I was there with the whole branch and the thing what I really like about being a member of the guild is it's it is it's that society the a, a new a new group of friends people who you can sit and chat to about and we have the most incredible conversations about all oh, sorts yeah. but uh, you know, you think, how, how did we get into <laughs> this subject <laughs> but um yeah it's it's that the society aspect of it and, and sharing the stitching and you know chatting while you're doing it and yeah. it's just it is just wonderful have you managed to get any younger you know younger stitches involved any you know is that is that a possibility we have yes yeah we have uh, we have a couple of, of younger stitches i mean they, they can't attend the meetings as much as they would like yeah. to they don't actually live in the village right. um but you know we have them we have tom's two daughters yeah um in that we also have we have a possibility of another younger person joining us but she is a very much younger person she's still at school so it depends on yeah. you know when when she can get there and that sort of thing yeah um, uh, what we do find is how fascinated children are when they see the panels when we go out on dis- on a display. Or a I should toy. imagine they are. Yes, it's like a it's, it's like a cartoon, really, isn't it? As yeah, well, absolutely. lots of action going on and colours, bright colours. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Yes, that's it. I mean, we we've taken it to some of the local schools. Mm-hmm. We've explained that um, you know this is they, they come into the battle reenactment weekend, and yeah, this is our way of telling the story. And we explain to them that it is just like a strip cartoon. Yes, because most people couldn't read, mm. so this was their way of finding out what had happened. Yes. Um, so yes, they they are. They love to sit and or stand and watch us work as mm. well. Yes, they will stand yes. for a long time and watch watching us sewing. When sadly there is so much less sort of creative play in schools these days, but quite a lot of children come along and they don't actually know what we're doing. I know, which is quite sad. I mean, yeah, when I'm doing these interviews, almost. Everybody so far I've spoken to have all said basically the same issue. My mum and my grandma taught me how to sew and how to yeah. knit and do crocheting, and I used to make my own clothes and blah blah. I did exactly the same thing, although even as a lot of my friends didn't. No, um, that's true. and so I was fairly unique amongst my group of friends, and still am. In that, <laughs> I, I did do all of those things. 
but again you know my mum my and my mum taught taught me to start off with but, yeah. but even now a, a generation two generations the kind of young kids as you say at school they, they, they just they're lost aren't they they, they yeah they just don't seem to because their parents have, have lost some of those skills That's and it. yet the other side of the thing is kind of handmade items and craft is growing in popularity yeah. Absolutely. you know so it's it's a different people are learning in a different way now people are mm-hmm. not learning from their parents they're learning from you yeah. yes. or as you say quite fascinated watching people actually actually yeah to do that so oh that's brilliant right in terms of how would you organize the stitching because if we've got these big panels you you haven't got them all going at the same time have you uh yeah (laughs) Uh, uh, 12 uh, 12 of them you've got 12 on the go now right fantastic yeah fantastic how so how does everybody organize how to how to work on them right well going back to the the scroll with the design on it uh, every time we get one of those people sign up for the bits that they want to do. Right. For example, there is a dog who runs through, excuse the pun, runs through the story. <laughs> and every time that dog turns up, I stitch that dog. Ah, right. So, you know, he, he turns up on panel 10 in the middle of the battle. That's it. I've circled it and put Heather. That's yours. Yeah, that's Heather's bit. dog. Right. Yeah. And then Nobody you're going to get consistency as well, aren't you? Well, yes, that's it. Yeah. Everybody, ev- every panel has several people working on it. We try not to have the same person doing most of one panel right because yes because that's when you start to get sort of individual idiosyncrasies and in mm-hmm. stitching starting to show up true true so, <clears throat> i mean we started off with i think three panels um six of them actually now as far as the, the far as the central story goes are waiting to get the borders but once we get the borders we will be back to, to working on all 12 at one time. Right, um, yes. We work, we work on them uh, within our meeting. We meet every Wednesday morning in yes. the community centre. And as well as working on them there, we all take them home as well. They have individual protective carrying bags. So every time we leave the meeting, you know, people will be, right, well, I don't need this one. Does anybody want this one for this yes. <laughs> Anybody going to get the dog, <laughs> yes. <laughs> It's up to me to try to keep track of who's got what. Right. Yes, uh, that's going to be a challenge then. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I think I've managed most of the time. We usually seem to to find that we've got the right name down against the right Brilliant. Well but, uh, but yes, at, at the moment, we're actually working on six. Right. Um, it's about to be five because another one is about to be finished. But we're currently uh, designing the borders or getting the orders designed for us right um, by a local artist mm-hmm. and when those come come up we'll be working on the whole going back on them practice. again yeah. so that's significant progress then really to say that six are pretty much finished in terms of the main story panel oh, yeah. in, yeah. in a couple of years that's you know absolutely fantastic progress yeah very good now, so my next question really was kind of, do you have any sort of plan or time scale for each for each panel? No, not really, because um, Chris doing the designs uh, was doing it voluntarily in his time outside of work. Mm-hmm. So it was a case of, well, you know, you just give us the designs when you can. Yes. Which which meant, you know, we could only embroider them when the designs were there. Mm-hmm. When people aren't working on panels, they're working on individual pieces, individual motifs from the tapestry which we then sell as souvenirs oh right um, so we're all busy all the time yeah it's me, it's me and my obsession about <laughs> plans and time scales i always trying to get some question in there about it so this is my version of my plans and time scale question for you <laughs> yeah any sort of plan or time scale for each panel <laughs> yeah tom always said it's a marathon not a sprint yes and the panels are finished when they're finished mm-hmm. we want them done to a high standard and of a high quality we're not particularly bothered about getting them done fast. Yes, yes. So, especially as at the moment we don't have a final display place for, place for them. We're working on that at the moment. Yes, to to get some sort of visitor centre. Yes, I, I keep reading various bits and pieces um, with you know like people mooting at some kind of visitor centre because yes. you know, that's the thing, isn't it? Something so beautiful has taken yeah. centre centre place in terms of kind of village activity and mm-hmm. all the rest of it, and then it needs a home, doesn't it? Absolutely. Well, that's it. Mm. I mean, everybody in the village refers to it as our tapestry. Our tapestry. That's which lovely. Which we think is fantastic. Yes. Yes. Absolutely, as it should be. Yes. But the trouble is with a textile that you have to be careful how you display it. If you want it to stay yes. in good condition, it has you have to have the humidity and light and temperature 
controlled. Yes, it's very com- complicated, isn't it, to keep things? Yeah, yeah it good. is. So uh, we're waiting to hear at the moment. There are negotiations going on at the moment and we're waiting to hear what's going to happen. Fantastic. But, I mean, once it's finished, there are several places that want us to take it there and display it. Yes. Um, the Abbott Stave project in Selby wants to have it in their, their gallery. Um, Beverly Minster, mm-hmm. uh, Leeds Armouries. We've already appeared at Leeds Armouries once. Yes. Um, and they, they would like to see it. So there are places that would like to display it for a while so we have a little leeway so it'll be going on tour for a while as well yes yeah, yeah. exactly brilliant we think it's probably going to be about 18 months two years before the thing is finished right so if it's going to tour after that that gives us a little bit extra time to sort out the visitor center so kind of 2020 onwards basically then watch this yeah. space to see what, yes. what happens yeah, next that's what we're aiming at so. fabulous now what would you say has been some of the highlights of the project so far heather oh goodness um i'm sure there's been lots <laughs> <laughs> there are, i mean we've, we've ended up doing things that none of us ever dreamed we would yes um shirley and another stitcher um took the panels that we had at the time to show to prince charles and camilla brilliant and they came to one of the pubs in the, the village yes. to see the damage that had been done by the floods um prince charles actually had to be dragged away <laughs> he was so interested he was <laughs> dragged away by people going oh, look here your royal highness yeah oh was, that's fantastic really yes lovely. yeah um we've we've been to all sorts of interesting venues we went to the Merchant Taylors Hall in York at the end of January. Um, there is a, a residence weekend at the end of January where if you if you have a York library card, you can get into a lot of places for free. All yes. places are open that aren't usually open. Mm-hmm. And the Merchant Taylors Hall, which is a beautiful, it's beautiful, isn't it? Yes. Hall building. Yes, asked us to come and be part of the the display. Oh, brilliant. Um, and it's it's the most gorgeous place, and mm. you wouldn't normally go in it unless no. you've been invited to a function there. It's yes, not public. No. Um, gosh, where else have we been? Well, as I say, we've been to Leeds Armouries. We've we have either been or we have booked for everywhere from um, right over near Hull to Thirsk and down as far as um, the bottom of Bradford. So we've covered an enormous amount of, yes. of, of um, distance. And Spreading the word, yeah. That's just, yes. Yeah, that's I mean, I mean we've done, we've done um, summer fates, we've done individual talks to all kinds of organisations. We even did a, a talk for City of York Embroiderers Guild. Yes, well, we're hoping to get, we're trying to confirm with Shirley to come to our little, because um, we're the Hull and East Riding Branch, to yes. um, come and have a chat with us next year. I think it's either April or October. I'm trying to, that's again, another, right. another date I'm trying to confirm with her when she's going to come and uh, come and see us. So yes. um, we're just a little branch. So. <laughs> we don't get well, many when, speakers and things. When we, come, when we come to do a talk, then you, you get quite a, a lot of bang for your buck, as it were, because... Shirley talks about the embroidery side of it. I do a much longer version of the history than I did just now. Mm -hmm. And as well as our sales table where you can buy souvenirs, we also bring a number of the panels with us and our own stitchers. Stitching live on the panels so you can actually see how the work is done. We've been part of of the Jorvik Festival last year with the Vikings. Um... Gosh, we've, we have done so much. It's actually quite hard to remember what we've done unless you actually you actually go and look back at, uh, at our past bookings. Well, this is it. This is when you need to kind of document it as well. Not that I want to give anybody a job, but um, <laughs> y- you do forget, don't you? And, and I yeah. think in terms of well, history, really, I suppose, how lovely to be able to document the process Yes. things that were lost when they did this in you know back in Bayer. oh yeah kind of like the, the the new way of documenting and facebook and social media and and actually you know i, I subscribe to stitch magazine and mm-hmm. there you all are in the june and july yes, we have yes. And that's, a, that's a lovely article is that she, she, she beautiful the photos. Of the group mm-hmm. as well as all the details of the, the yes project. she took some fantastic photos 
Um, if people don't normally get Stitch magazine, I mean, it's out for a, a couple of months. Yes. So there should still be some in WH Smith. You would have thought, you would have thought so. It's been out about, has this been out about three weeks or so? I can't like that. Yeah. But yeah, it just pops through the door, so I don't really notice. But no. yeah, <laughs> no. so if, if you haven't had your Stitch magazine, then go and have a look because it's it really, it's a really super article. So then you've done obviously doing this podcast and I'm sure you've had various yeah. other media appearances as well so there's another thing isn't it as you say yeah. when you started yeah. off this project did you did you expect you would be getting all this um attention really and doing learning all these other skills and, and opportunities no. to do things <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah I mean I'm, I'm lucky I don't I get up and talk about anything at the drop yeah. of a hat but uh you know I've learned so much more about the the history. I'm. I can talk about the embroidery side of it as well now, having listened to to Shirley. Yes, we've we've been in Yorkshire Life magazine. We've yep. had brilliant. You know, all sorts of professional photographers coming and photographing the stuff. We were on Look North. It's honestly, we've just we had no idea yeah. it was going to be so big when we started it. Yeah, it's it's just a, a tremendous achievement for everybody involved. It I, is. I, I, it absolutely. Really is. So, yeah, brilliant. We're just kind of getting towards the end of our time today, Heather. So we've kind of looking at think about we're not quite sure where we will be able to see the panels when they're all finished, but visitor centre might be likely. Uh, yeah. And you've kind of gone through some of the future plans and events and publicity that you're organizing at the moment um yeah. in terms of people keeping up with what you're doing is there anywhere particular that they can you know keep in touch with you and you know see yeah. see progress etc we have a facebook page right you search for stamford bridge tapestry 1066 yeah you can join our facebook page we have a website at www Stanford Bridge Tapestry, or one word, dot org dot uk. Right, and we have a newsletter. If people want to get in touch to ask about um, us doing a talk, or if they want to be put on the newsletter, or even if they just you know want to ask questions, they can email me yes. at publicity at Stanford Bridge Tapestry dot org dot uk. That one comes straight through to me. And I can give people an idea of how much we charge for our talks, when we might be available to come and do one. I can put people on the free monthly email newsletter list. Yeah. Uh, and then they'll, they'll get – one of the things that we're very keen to do, actually, is make, make links with other local history groups. Yes. Because we may be looking at different periods of history, but we all have the same – You're thing still a history thing. group, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, we all have the same problems in, in – terms of how do we present this to the the public how do we explain what we're doing and that sort of thing mm -hmm. so in that newsletter there's usually um a little snippet about another local history group i try to keep it informative um and apart from that we're at this this summer we are at the show at bishop wilton on july the 15th right. we're at Hazel <clears throat> hazelwood castle hotel on july the 16th Yes, the following day, we know. <laughs> um, and we're at uh, Loverton Hall on the 1st of August for Yorkshire Day. And then getting into September, people can find us at Dunnington Fair on Saturday the 2nd. Fang Fest at Fangfoss. Oh, yeah, Fangfoss, yeah. Sunday the 3rd. And at the Battle Reenactment which is the, I think it's the 24th this year. It is the closest Saturday to the 25th of September anyway. Yeah. And that yeah. will be at the Station Club in Stamford Bridge. Right, brilliant. So hopefully I'm trying to get this um, all launched so people might find that they've missed the July 15th and 16th because this episode might not have gone live. By then. <laughs> and all of the links that Heather has given us then I will put those on the show notes for the page. So each episode has its own, it's like a glorified blog post really with the relevant episodes and also some images. So we'll, we'll, we'll post um, three images on there for you as well. So I think that's about where we are at with the Stamford Bridge Tapestry. Thank you so much, Heather. It's been an absolute delight talking You're to welcome. you. And for you sharing your stitchery story, 
and it is a story in stitch this one isn't it so our yeah, stitchery story much. yes thank you for sharing that with us today it's been absolutely fascinating finding out more about it and certainly people will be very interested to go and find out more we've covered how people can get in touch with you also so that just leaves me to say thank you thank you so much once again it's been brilliant talking to you and we'll i certainly am on the newsletter list and i keep a very close interest in what's going on so thank you so much heather thank you for inviting me it's been a pleasure if you like this episode and want to hear more then please join the stitchery stories fan club so you can get an email when a new episode is released it's a quick and easy way of listening and of keeping up with any news and offers from our lovely guests please visit stitcherystories.com to join the fan club. Of course, if you have iTunes, then subscribe there to automatically get new episodes. And why not leave us a review and rating whilst you are there? So that is the end of our Stitchery story for today. So keep stitching, keep smiling, and keep creating your very own Stitchery stories. Bye.